I hit each continent every day from a news source because, and it's just, not only it's nice to know what's going on in other places, but it's really interesting to hear the perception of us. And right now, we looked at the UN Security Council, voted for a ceasefire, and we vetoed it. Here we go. Asking, specifically calling for the genocide of Jews, does that constitute bullying or harassment? If it is directed and severe or pervasive, it is harassment. So the answer is yes. It is a context-dependent decision, Congresswoman. I was not focused on, but I should have been. The irrefutable fact that a call for genocide of Jewish people is a call for some of the most terrible violence human beings can perpetrate. So Peter failed to set up this clip. My well, Jesus Did anybody Christ, know give it was me a the break. UN thing? I thought you were no, I thought I, was, I, I apologize, and I thought it was the UN oh, thing. Okay. And again, we need to get our stop getting our signals crossed between us, Colin, and whatever. But the, th this show's been all over the place. We're all okay? over the place. Before. It is what it is. Okay. So as you can imagine, <laughs> um, and we were going to address this as a primary topic today, uh, President of UPenn, uh, University of Pennsylvania, Liz McGill, has stepped down but as we know that's really just she was bullied fire. bullied into stepping down or she would have been fired and so several others are on the chopping block by the way harvard and there's another one this is all one big conglomerate of things that are happening right now in conjunction with israel's genocide uh, on gaza so over the weekend the u.n security council had a vote 15 nations were allowed to vote. The UK, like the pussies they are, decided oh. to abstain. But I, again, people who abstain, go home. 13 nations voted and the and, and the genocide. And who was the one nation that said no? Not even that said no. We literally have the power to veto. If you're one of the five main, there's this whole thing about the UN, which makes it about as democratic as the Democratic Party. Um, it's the, essentially, they ha we're super delegate. And as a superdelegate, we get to veto, even though there was a majority of countries. That's just how it works. Again, it's like superdelegates. So we... I thought it was interesting during the primary yeah. in 2016 when they said, you know what one superdelegate is the equivalent of? 10,000 votes. Yeah. So this is how this works. But um, so apparently... I'm not exactly sure what it is, what the information is that this particular, that the president of UPenn was called in about, mm -hmm. that was she was being kind of, you know, but all these people are well, being witch hunted. I'm sorry, well, but they are no offense whole, to my witch friends. The whole purpose of this witch hunt is has to do with the cracking down of the First Amendment rights of students on various campuses throughout the country that believe in a free Palestine. Is there going to be people that are going to protest that will ultimately say death to Jews or, you know, end the state of Israel shouldn't exist? Of course. And that's called free speech. But that doesn't help. OK, no. like that whole the whole reputation. And I grew up sort of knowing this, like that a lot of people had about Jews is that somehow there's this sort of like global Jewish cabal that sort of runs the world. Right. Like there's this sort of paranoia. Well, when you have people like Debbie and other people that represent Jews sitting there trying to shut down, censor and end everything, call everybody an anti-Semite, you're basically you are you're making them right. You're making that conspiracy about this this powerful Jewish cabal. You're making it correct. Because you're sitting there as a cabal shutting down speech because you don't like the idea that some people might say mean things about Jews. Well, what, and so because of that, we don't have free speech. Well, what you're also seeing is the exposure of the Jewish billionaire class, which, as I've said all along, that this is a class war. The people who are in favor of what Israel is doing to the Palestinian people right now are people of exceptional affluence for the most part. There is a significant portion of the Jewish population that is working class, middle class, in number of cases, even upper middle class, who are looking at this and saying, this is a genocide. Stop. End it. Basically, here's the thing of when you know people are so privileged and entitled like my congresswoman. She actually believes that she knows better than the United Nations, Doctors Without Borders, Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and every other international organization that has called this a genocide, but she knows better. The and arrogance, and like it's- And let's not forget the trillions and trillions of dollars in natural gas 
that is in Gaza. Yeah. And they want it. Well, and interestingly enough, mm. back in, was it June or July, there was a leasing permit sold. Yeah. Um, there has been some exchange of permitting off the coast of Gaza for drilling. And that went down in June, July. So if you think that none of that is related, you just haven't been watching our show long enough. <laughs> <laughs> Let's continue. McGill has agreed to stay on until an interim president is appointed and will remain a tenured faculty member, according to the chair of the Board of Trustees. At Harvard, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Harvard's rules of bullying and harassment, yes or no? It can be, depending on the context. Along with McGill, Harvard University President Claudine Gay and Massachusetts Institute of Technology President Sally Kornbluth also testified. Harvard. They failed on the global stage, Mark. Um, what will go down in congressional history as the most viewed congressional testimony in the history of the United States Congress, three university presidents could not answer correctly the question, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate their university's code of conduct when it comes to bullying and harassment? You know, at least if you know, I, I have not... to say something about that, because I have a feeling, and again, this is where I don't know the actual, what was put out there that they're trying to stifle, but what they're doing is they're taking the phrase from the river to the sea, and they're conflating it and saying, that it means they want to genocide the Jews. Now, I do not know what happened on all three of these campuses. For all I know, there were people literally marching with signs saying, kill Jews, genocide Jews, okay? That could have happened. I would have seen the signs if that was the case. Which so, was not so my thought is, chances are, people were shouting things from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, and people like Debbie that are constantly, God, putting out this ridiculous Zionist trope that that implies genocide of the Jews, which it does not. It just doesn't. You can't have your own facts. You just can't. So that's what they're saying. So if that's in fact what the students were saying, then that's why these presidents cannot say that that violates the standards. Now, I don't know why they didn't ask for clarification. I would have said, well, they must know. See, I don't know why they didn't say uh, nobody called for genocide. What they said was da 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 da. Like, I, that's why I don't understand. And so I would need to know. And by the way, if there are psycho people out there, which there are, that yelled horrible things, it's possible. Grow up. You will not survive this world. I feel like we were kids and we knew better. Six and stones. Remember? Like, I, I just, I, I'm much more concerned with the actual to. genocide. Was the general was supposed to kill again? What's his name? Um, Rafat, but he, yeah. he, he wasn't, uh, yeah, he was an author and a poet. Yeah, so Rafat was, uh, they, they went after him for a tweet that he put out about uh, the burning of babies in ovens and that where they coated with baking powder again, because it was so absurd. There was no proof that any of that had happened. He was mocking it because it is ridiculous. And of course, Barry Weiss, who's one of the biggest Zionist nut jobs out there, decided that she was going to have him targeted, which he was. And he his was whole resulting. family. And, and of course, they were killed. He, they and killed so now, as far as I'm family. concerned, Barry Weiss could technically, you could bring, um, you know, accessory to murder charges against her as far as I'm concerned. Well, they'll just claim he was collateral damage in their search for Hamas. Of course, that's what they'll say. But you know yeah. what? Just for her to have to face the music would be pretty amazing. And I, I got to tell you, there's no way I would sit in front of any of these hearings and allow them to state as facts things that I know are not facts. I don't care what the IDF says. I don't care about anything Israel's, I will not, you know how you know Israel's lying? Their lips are moving. Mm. That's how you know Israel is lying. And as someone who was lied to by Israel, the state of Israel, by Zionists and brainwashed and continually lied to for better part of 40 something years, as long as I would, was willing to eat their crap, I can tell you they lie. So when they say that when Joe Biden doesn't want to believe the Hamas, the Gaza Ministry of Health or whoever's doing that because he doesn't believe them. Well, I don't know about them one way or another, but they're not the ones that brainwashed me and lied to me for 40 years. So I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. And I'm going to say that the liars are the people that lie. So that's what I find. And so when they're using this information in these hearings, it's lies. And nobody seems to question it. And Mark Levin, who's one of the biggest scumbags out of I all of like conservative Fox. media, is somebody who has said, and I quote, "All Palest no Palestinian is innocent. So basically saying that everybody who's a Palestinian is Well, Hamas. but if you've been listening to Netanyahu and his goons, they've been saying that the whole time. There's not even secret language. Yeah, it's not like even like Pizzagate where somebody's ordering pizzas. They're literally saying these are human animals. They know, so better. Gonna they know better. They do. They're just, but again, 
It's all about money and power, baby. Here we go. Jewish. Uh, you're what I call a righteous Gentile. And in this context, I ask you this question. If it wasn't Jewish students, if it was some other minority group, do you believe the president of Harvard, who you questioned and who was outrageous, do you believe she would have sat there and said, we need acts, it depends on the context, this, that, and the other? There is no question mark that right. had any Strong. other group uh, any other minority group be put in that question, question, they would have answered it very differently without a, without any hesitation. They would have said, yes, of course it violates the code of conduct when it comes okay. to bullying wow, and stop. harassment. And that itself is telling. So it's this anti-Semitism is inexcusable, but it needs Please. to be rooted out at its core in these ivory towers. It has poisoned the ivory oh, towers me. and higher education broadly. better things to watch. You complain too much. I I complain because I don't want to watch Fox News. It's 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 toxic. It's important to know exactly what type of propaganda they're going to be throwing out at people. And basically, it's the old uh, everybody's an anti semite, everybody's a racist. Oh, they wouldn't have done that if it was another group. Of course, they would have. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Are you freaking kidding me? I am so tired of of Jews playing the victim card. I am so tired. Even guess what, Jews? There's people that don't like us. That's they, they don't like us and they're going to say it and they're going to march about it. Get over it. OK, hiding them and stifling them does not make them go away. And you haven't done yourselves any favors because now people really oh get to God. see what this is all about, how the the Jewish elites uh, basically strong arm every major financial institution in this country to get them to do what they want. I'm just not going to fall in line and I refuse to be gaslit. And that's where. Oh, and can I, I want to go back to one thing she said because, oh, that he said. That Mr. Levin. What, whoever that is. Mark he used, Levin. Okay. He used the phrase righteous Gentile. Okay. <laughs> and I want to, do you, well, no, do you know what that is? Uh, all I know is that there are people like Mark Levin who, again, those people in the Jewish community who see themselves as the chosen. No, people. that's not what it's about. It's okay. not what it's about. Again, stop saying that. No, I don't know Jews that walk around thinking that. But. When you say righteous Gentile, the term, what it what it connotates, right, were Gentile people during the Holocaust that hid, harbored, and helped save Jews. Those were what we call righteous Gentiles. In fact, at places like Holocaust memorials at Yad Vashem in Jerusalem, there's like entire rooms and tributes to the righteous Gentiles. And that's a phrase that denotes that somebody kind of put their life on the line for to help Jews. And he used that for her calling out a university president for not censoring their student body. That makes her a righteous Gentile. So that puts her in the same category as like, I don't know the people that harbored Anne Frank. Uh, you know, and I don't know, you know, you call her a righteous Gentile. What kind of student? That is what I call a very nebishy thing to do. You're playing your Jew card. It's very unappealing to everybody else. It's helping to perpetuate the anti-Semitism. It's not stopping it. No, it's not stopping it. Um, it's making it worse. And people like Debbie, to me, it's like she should be the poster child for anti-Semitism. I, I can't imagine anybody ever anywhere meeting her, watching her, anything, and then not coming away from that. And if that's your only perception of Jews and being like, oh, hell no. So, I, you know, it's interesting to me that she's calling everybody anti-Semitic while simultaneously probably creating more anti-Semites than the world has ever known. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.